welcome No DQ Galaxy to another edition of the No DQ Review, number 5353. I am Virtue, and you're going to see the end of this beard. As you know it, this will be the last episode, because next week it will be completely gone because of Kofi Kingston. Now, Big G, don't move. We just spent 30 minutes getting you in the right spot to record this video. How is everybody doing? Big G, I will start with you. I'm doing good. Uh, I just came back from date night, went to watch Pet Cemetery, and we went out for dinner. So oh. it's a very good evening. Good for you. Aaron Rift. I'm doing very well. We've had a very busy week, of course, with WrestleMania. Virtue, I know you were out there in New York. You were doing a lot of things. It was a very, very strong weekend for the website traffic-wise. I was extremely busy. But I am a bit burned out with wrestling. I will say that much. Five straight nights of... WWE action and for other fans out there they were also watching Ring of Honor New Japan and all the indie shows there was definitely a lot of wrestling content to discuss um, so let's go ahead and keep it going we got we got more topics to cover hey TJS what's up with you man well same old same old just doing school being ready to be finished with it in May and um, I had barbecued burgers for dinner so can't complain. Um, I think that Raw and SmackDown were very lackluster this week, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Well, the ratings were down after WrestleMania, which is a shocker or maybe not, and I'll talk about that later. Let's finish our recap on Mania and NXT because that's really what the whole weekend was about. Big G, I'm going to start with you. I gave both shows, and I – you know, I was there live, so I was entertained. You know me. I've yeah. lost part of my voice heckling with the fans. Ended up heckling with someone on Twitter, and then there were two rows behind me, and then we did a selfie. Next thing you know, he follows me on Twitter. That's what the wrestling community is all about. I gave both shows an A- minus live. I was entertained. As long as everything was, I, I did yeah. not let that affect the scores. Um, the fans got everything they wanted result-wise. Literally, yeah. Johnny's the champion. Um, Seth Rollins is a champion. Kofi Kingston is a champion. Becky is a champion. Finn Balor's a champion. What do you think? What is your take on both shows? Which one did you like better? And any likes and dislikes from the weekend? Um, I enjoyed both shows. I think I gave NXT an A minus, if I'm correct, and I think I gave WrestleMania an A. Um, wow, higher grade. It was. It, it was. No, I think I gave it an A minus too. If I'm, I think um, it was good, but it was long. You know, it was seven and a half hours. I felt I felt bad for Virtue. Um, what a time! But, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I did obviously I enjoyed NXT a little bit more because that's that's my brand. You know, my girl Shayna retained, still the women's champion down there. The only uh, true heel in NXT, might I add. Thank it's the you. only one thank that can draw heel heat. Thank you. And no, and nobody cheers for her like they cheer Adam Cole, but that's a whole other situation. Um, I did like the part where, like, Triple H pulled out Batista's nose ring. That was pretty, like, graphic. Um, what else did I like about WrestleMania? Uh, Becky obviously won. Rollins won, like you said. Aaron was probably shocked as hell when Rollins won. <laughs> he thought we all thought Lesnar was going to retain. Other than that, it was a good weekend. I'm glad it's finally over with. Now we can go back to normal Monday and Tuesday and, well, Wednesday for me for NXT and NXT UK. Other than that, I'm good to go now. TJS, what did you think uh, about this whole weekend? I thought the takeover was very good, as always. Um I can't I can't complain about that show at all. I almost called a perfect card except for the women's fatal four way match. Uh, I give that show an A, and for WrestleMania, um, oh man, that show was just so long. And you you mentioned that everyone got the results that they wanted, while the revival lost. So I wasn't happy about that. Uh, again, if that mattered, you know, at a higher level, you know, yeah. it doesn't. You know, it doesn't. You know. Yeah. It, it was on the kickoff, and it, it just frustrated me so much to see them get the shaft like that. Um, I was looking forward to the Universal title match the most, and it was kind of weird that it went on first. 
like so throughout the show since that had already happened i was like wow okay kind of weird because now the next thing is kofi and then becky um i was really disappointed by aj versus randy orton i thought that it was kind of short i feel like um for like the last year it seems like aj styles's matches haven't um it seems like he's been in first gear the whole time and it's like he needs to get to that second gear and really get moving but he, he has it, and it's like I, I think that he's holding back because um, I guess he's not the champion, so they don't want him having the 30-minute classics or whatever. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Kofi Kingston winning the title. I know it was a feel-good moment, but I wanted Daniel Bryan to hold that title for a long time. I wanted him to break Punk's record because I think Bryan's a hotter act than Kofi, even though he's not being cheered. I he, believe that. He, here we go again with the punk thing again. Nobody cares about CM Punk. Well, Actually, they do, and Aaron's site traffic, when he's ever mentioned, will prove that. Yeah, but, I mean, his record is still in the record book. So, if you like him or not, he still is the longest-reigning champ of the modern era, and I think Daniel Bryan deserved to surpass it. Um, and Do you think Kofi's a better, like, him chasing is the bigger buzz? Like, you know what I mean? I, th- I think that's what that was all about. It's like, now that he has it, it's like, I think, because I was at SmackDown doing the Kofi, Kofi. Thanks for retweeting that, Aaron. Mm-hmm. And it literally, it seemed like people were gassed out. Now, maybe because it was a long weekend. But what do you think if they really were behind Kofi? They would have, like, chanted it, like, five minutes straight. But they didn't. And um, I don't know. I, I just think that's. I think it was a bad move putting the title on Kofi because I don't think that the New Day works well as an act as WWE champion. It just doesn't make sense. Um, And finally, I'll just talk about the main event real quick. Um, I did not like Becky um, not tapping someone out. I wasn't a fan of the controversial finish, but um, it it seemed like Becky's nipples were hard in that match and they were quite noticeable. Um, So that, that was nice. But other than that, I thought it was an okay match, but I thought that Kofi versus Bryan probably should have closed. Um, so I'll give WrestleMania a, a B. It was outside, TJS, and it got a little chilly later in the night, so duly noted. Aaron Rift, I mean, I know you've talked about all of this stuff, but you got to do it again on the review. That's why we got you here. Refresh everyone's memories. Well, first of all, TJS, what about EC3's nipples? Did you notice those? <laughs> Was he on that show? He was. You know he was on that show. Don't try to... <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention, really quick, uh, Big G mentioned the nose ring spot. Did you guys see the referee hand a nose ring to Triple H? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. He didn't actually rip out Batista's nose ring. I thought that was hilarious. Virtue, you're getting blurry on, over there. I don't know. Let's keep talking. I'll fix it. Okay, yeah, well, you just you got know, blurry. Your thoughts on Mania and NXT. Okay, well, I, I'm i surprised that you guys gave NXT a low, lower rating than I did. I thought NXT was probably the best takeover, arguably, ever. I, I thought it was right up there with the first Brooklyn takeover and last year's one in New Orleans. Virtue, were you at that one or no? You were at the, the Ring of Honor show, right? Yeah, I did not do NXT last year, but this year I did. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I thought it was an absolutely amazing show. Pretty much a perfect show. Um, WrestleMania, good show. But, yeah, like we all said, too long. And it was just a very long weekend overall. I do agree about Raw and SmackDown being uh, fairly disappointing follow-ups to WrestleMania. Um, I said it before when we were doing the predictions. Having all three baby faces win, I thought was overkill. And you're basically telling the same story three times. The underdog overcoming the odds and holding up the title and having that big victory. You're telling the same story three times. And then I felt like Becky's promo and Kofi's promo on Raw, um, they were pretty much the same thing as what we heard on Tuesday night on SmackDown. Um, So yeah, I wasn't really a big fan of doing all three babyfaces winning, as I said going into WrestleMania, which is why I felt that at least one of them should have come up short. Um, But other than that, I mean, WrestleMania was a solid show. If you take the best five hours of WrestleMania and put it all together, I thought it was an A show. But then, of course, you have that other three hours that was 
um, not quite as good as the best five hours, and you know it, it brought oh, it down you know a little bit. Oh, what I forgot? What did you guys? Um, what did you guys think about Cena coming back as the Doctor of Thugonomics? Excellent oh. segment. Yeah, I thought that was probably the best thing for him to do. It would be better than just regular John Cena coming out and then just like, Elias, this is WrestleMania. He almost needed to do that because last year he kind of got embarrassed by The Undertaker. By the way, am I clear yet? Or am I yeah, still you've heard? been clear. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Yeah, you, um, you know, my whole thoughts being there, obviously NXT, it's hard when nobody invests into heels, right? Everybody's a baby face, with the exception of Shayna. I, I thought the best match live to me was Riddle versus Velveteen. Dude, when, he, when Velveteen Dream came out as a Statue of Liberty, again, do we need to reiterate, this guy understands sports entertainment. And I would think that he's got to ca- you know, catch Vince McMahon's eye with this kind of stuff. And I just hope. I, I like Matt Riddle. I like how his matches go where they look like they're kind of shoots in a way, maybe even more so than Brock Lesnar. Um, the last match was very, very good, but it got a little bit unbelievable when you kicked out of everything, you know. But yeah. but again, fantastic show. And as for Mania, you know, I sat there the whole night for all those hours, and it, it kind of had a good pacing, and I didn't feel burned out or tired at all for whatever reason. But I had good seats um like there was in the upper bowl but it was the first row they were kind of centered i did look down at the ring and up at the tron back and forth um right outside i had the restroom and snacks so i was just in a very good location maybe that's why i enjoyed it hogan coming back was kind of a and i I, heard a roar like when his music hit when alexa bliss mentioned him it, it was a pretty good pop so i did enjoy that um roman they they started doing the way for roman and drew but it followed Brian and Kofi, and it was already a long show. But they didn't give Roman like the Roman versus gender hate for Money in the Bank, you know. He, but you can tell the fans just don't want to like those style of guys, and and it is what it is. It's 2019. I was kind of felt chills after the match when they showed Roman do the little prayer in the corner. We know yeah. it was his first full match after battling leukemia. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, the the two year anniversary of Rosie's death. Uh, fell on WrestleMania or something like that. He had a lot going through his mind. And he delivered, in my opinion. And I don't yeah. care if the fans like him or not. I look at it from a different aspect. So I, that was awesome. Dr. Thug- Thugonomics was good. Kind of shocked by that, but it made sense. Um, Corbin seemed like... Corbin and Angle didn't get the heat I thought it would. Like, bad heat. You know, people kind of... From being in there, they kind of were realizing they were seeing Kurt's last WrestleMania match. And of course, once Corbin won, you know, boo. But, and, and of course the end, you know, how did, why did that happen that way? Did Ronda go into business for herself and kick out early? I think it was supposed to be that finish. And it was supposed to be one of those. And Hogan's known for doing this one, two, three, go back to the warrior match. Um, War, Warrior and Hogan at WrestleMania six. As soon as the ref hits three, the kick out happens just to make it look like you were that close to kicking right. out. I think Ronda was supposed to do maybe something similar and it just didn't time out well. And it looked like that. That's just my take. Who knows? But double A minuses for both shows, man. We can move on. Are you guys good with moving on? Well, I was just going to say, I would have okay. given TakeOver an A plus if the women's match was better. I just didn't think it was that. I didn't think it was incredible or anything. Fair enough. Okay. You're, you're the big critic, man. The eh. it's it's all good. Now wait, you have something to say, Big G, Mr. NXT, Mr. Shayna Baszler. No, I'm just saying, you know, it, it was a fatal four way and you did have Bianca Belair and you had Kyrie Saint. Was it the people in the match that didn't get you interested, T A J S or I is just, it um, you just can't or are you are you bored of Shayna Baszler like everybody oh, else is? Oh, I think Shayna Baszler is really good. I, I just think I've seen better women's matches on takeovers before. Okay. Well, they've set the bar high. You know what I mean? I mean, TakeOver, by doing all the matches the way they do, it does set each TakeOver higher and higher to reach. So. And Shayna, she's one of those slow-paced wrestlers. Oh, and right. I, I think she's really good. Like, um, when she did the Kira Fu to Clutch by grabbing your hair a few TakeOvers back, I just thought that was awesome. Yeah. Well, interesting, because Undertaker was not at WrestleMania. Now, I saw some pictures online with him and McCool 
backstage or, or in the set, like before people was that was that a leak? Was that a real photo? Yeah. No, he they posted so, it. Michelle's. So they posted didn't use it. them there, and I want to know everybody's thoughts on this. But they used them on Raw, and I'm now that I've experienced all this, and I'm thinking, did he just not want to be part of Mania? Did they just want to kind of slowly, you know, weed him away from WrestleMania? Or was it a payday thing? And why show up and do that on Raw? That's what was strange. Um, you know, poor Elias. You know, like Aaron, you've re- you've mentioned this before. You can have The Rock, Cena, Undertaker spots, but it, if you're if the same things happen to you over and over again, you're really just truly buried. You're not getting the rub of the iconic name that's doing it to you. Aaron, I want to start with you. Thoughts on Taker's Raw appearance? Like when it happened, I was like, I mean, first thing being there live, everyone's popping, and I'm like. Why wasn't he at Mania? And I'm looking at my phone. And right. how was it from the TV aspect? Uh, well, as soon as Elias said that line that the next person to interrupt me is a dead man, we all knew it was coming. I mean, everybody reacted accordingly to that. And yeah, when Undertaker came out on television, it was it was pretty epic. The reaction on social media, everybody was excited. Uh, it was cool to see him back. And I think they're doing something at the next Saudi Arabia show. I believe that's on June seventh. And I guess the idea was that Undertaker, he's going to be doing that match. He's getting a big payday for that. And there really wasn't a need for him to be at WrestleMania. So why not save him for the show where he can be more useful, where his name can draw people in like the Saudi Arabia show. So to me, that does make sense. I don't, I did not miss Undertaker at WrestleMania. I was like, you know, he's done. He, he had his run. It's time to move on to other things. You know, I, I, I didn't really watch WrestleMania and think, oh, man, it's a bummer Undertaker didn't show up. I didn't feel that way personally. I was like, exactly. if anything, I thought that was a positive that he was not at WrestleMania because I feel like those days are gone. It's time to start wrapping things up here with his career, maybe do one or two matches here or there. But other than that, I think it's time to call it a career. Just my take on it. TGS, what do you think about Taker's Raw appearance and poor Elias being gimmick fodder? Well, I think that Elias sold it really well whenever he said, next one interrupt me is a dead man. And then his eyes got really big when the gong sounded. I thought that was really cool. Um, but like Aaron said, as soon as he said dead man, I was like, no. Oh. I think it would have been better if this was on WrestleMania and John Cena had already interrupted Elias like once. And then you had Elias come out another time because then he could rap about how John Cena was terrible. And then he could say, now, I'm not going to be inter- interrupted again. The next one that does it is a dead man. And then we could have still gotten Undertaker, who is synonymous with WrestleMania, to make his appearance. Um, I don't know. I thought that it, it's always good to see Undertaker, even though it, I feel like he gets balder every time we see him. Um, well, and, and people age differently, and it's hard, you know. Can't yeah, blame him yeah. for aging. Yeah, and, and it's really sad because I watched uh, a WWE 24 about, or they removed uh, like a portion where he was talking about putting like relief injections in to to soothe the pain because he wants to entertain the fans and everything. So I feel like he still wants to wrestle, but Father Time it was uh, catching up to him like it did Kurt Angle. Um, but yeah, poor Elias, like you said. Uh, I feel like he needs to go back to being a babyface because all he does is do the cheap heat and he's a jobber to the stars, it seems. I'm kind of surprised that him and Cena didn't have like a impromptu match at WrestleMania. That would have been cool. But um, if we have Undertaker versus, versus Elias at the Saudi Arabia show, I, I don't think it's going to do Elias any favors because remember Rusev had the casket match with Undertaker and where's Rusev now? So, remember, those brother. are just more or less house shows, and they're but they're they're making a lot of money doing them. I mean, that's really. Don't get me wrong; it's it should be like an honor to wrestle the Undertaker, but I mean, the guy just doesn't have it anymore. I don't think. Big G, certified Big G, which we will talk about. All right. So, in the group chat, I find I said that. I was tired of the Undertaker and Virtue message back. I'm tired of NXT. Well, let me get let me let me let me let me straighten this issue up. I have nothing against the Undertaker. He's a good wrestler. I've liked him for years. But we've seen this dead man gimmick now since like WrestleMania 20. Come back as the American badass. When I heard Elias say, you know, the next person who's gonna come out is a dead man, 
I was expecting, you know, dead man walking and then you're, you're going to pay or like rolling or something like that and take her coming out on the motorcycle and something like that. Wait, but wait, wait. But, what, but take her going to come and uh, attack Elias because he was he was dissing hip hop or something. He would come out with a sideways hat or something. This is the American badass. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, when uh, when Cena came out at WrestleMania, I was like, all right, he's. Going, he's doing a throwback to Dr. Thugonomics. Why doesn't Taker do a throwback and go to the American Badass? I mean, he still got a big pop at uh, the Raw after Mania, and people still cheered for him. And I didn't think he was on WrestleMania because they really didn't have anything for him for him to do at Mania since they already had Cena. And if he's going to uh, wrestle at, at the next show in Saudi Arabia, why are you going to have him at WrestleMania as well? So he's still... Regardless, he's still going to get a big payday in Saudi Arabia. So, but I would like to see him come out as the American badass in Saudi Arabia and see how that goes over. <laughs> well, there you have it. You heard it from Big he, G on the No DQ review for here. What's that, TJ? I said he'll be the heel if he comes out as that with the American flag and everything. Well, and Elias, I think Elias is loving this. I mean, he's working with Cena, he's working with Undertaker. So, so what if he gets buried or job? You know, he's having the time of his life right now. Probably. I mean, he's making more money than on the indies. So, speaking of heel, how about like uh, a no name guy uh, at the Hall of Fame attacking Brett? Now, obviously, they did NXT on Friday night this year, and then the Hall of Fame was on Saturday. So, the <laughs> WWE production crew was a little bit lazy. Instead of changing the set to your traditional Hall of Fame set, they kept it the arena so they can just convert it back for raw. But with, by doing that, it seemed like it was a little more open. And this fan said, and you know, I don't even know his name. Somebody said he's an MMA fighter with two wins, one loss. I don't even know. And I don't care. Cause this is ridiculous, yeah. but he said, Oh, it felt right. Like this was the opportunity. So I do like how the boys, the wrestlers came right in. I saw Shane. I saw Rousey's husband. That was awesome. You know, get rid of this guy. I don't know where security was, but if you have all those workers right there around the ring, you don't need security. But Dash Wilder, everybody's giving him props for jacking this guy in the face, which, you know, what he did was ridiculous. You don't do that. No. At the same time, he's on camera, and the guy was apprehended, and this, it looks bad. And, and I can't say, TGS, maybe that's why they jobbed out to Ryder and Hawkins two nights in a row. Maybe that was going to happen anyway. But... I just thought that wasn't very professional. You know, if you wanted to get a shot on him, get in the ring when 20 people are around him and give him those jabs where you know it's really not going to be noticed. So is Dash Wilder a hothead now? Probably. Um, coincidentally, let's talk about Brett in this situation first. So, Aaron, I want to start with you. Site traffic boom when this happened? Uh, yeah, it was uh, quite unexpected. I was like, what the hell just happened here? My screen went blank. Were you there at the Hall of Fame? No, no, were, I didn't do that or Ring of Honor. We were in Times Square trying to get a lot of that stuff done because the other days were just so consumed of wrestling. Okay, so you were not there, so you didn't get that live perspective. I would have been interested to hear that if you were there live. Um, yeah, for us at home, it basically just went straight to black, and you know, we were all concerned. We were like worried that something really bad happened to Brett, like he got seriously yeah. hurt. Um, obviously, what that guy did was really messed up, and you know, Brett. We know his medical history. He had that stroke. He's battled cancer before. And uh, a bad fall could, you know, do serious damage or even kill him under certain yeah. circumstances. So, yeah, what that guy did was was absolutely wrong. Um, as far as throwing the punches, you know, that's an old school mentality that if you jump the barrier, um, anything goes. And we, we've heard stories over the years where wrestlers just beat the crap out of fans that jump the barrier. But yeah, we are in 2019, and you know, in in a real world situation, if you attack somebody who cannot defend themselves, um, you know that could make you just as guilty as that person. So what Dash Wilder did, he basically blatantly threw a punch at this guy who was clearly no longer a threat. You know, he's being yeah. held by like half a dozen guys. He's not going anywhere. He's not doing anything. And Dash Wilder just threw that punch right at the guy's face. So yeah, I, I feel Wilder. Um, crossed the line he shouldn't have crossed but you know it's it's hard to uh feel sorry for that fan after what he did to brett but yeah i think wilder went a bit too far with that punch 
Um, so that that's pretty much my take on it. And that guy that did that should definitely 100% be prosecuted. TJS, um, your thoughts from a defense attorney perspective. Did Dash Wilder have every right to do that? Well, um, is that what you're going to college for? Well, that's what I was in. I, I've got like three years of criminal justice training, uh, and I'm, I'm actually going to bring that up. They taught us to eliminate the threat. Um, if if they have someone charging us or whatever, eliminate the threat. That doesn't mean kill. That doesn't mean hit them when they're restrained. That just means neutralize the threat. And I feel like that's what is, what happened. The threat was neutralized, like you guys said, and then Dash just punched the dude. Um, I, I feel like Vince probably like high fived him for this, but he's like, but you can't do that. Like you shouldn't do that. But good job. Like, who the hell attacks a 61 year old smoke survivor like that? That's just it's outrageous. And I was I didn't even watch the Hall of Fame. I just I saw in the group chat you guys were saying like someone just attacked Brad Hart. I was like, oh, people what? were tweeting that it was me, and I'm like, I'm not there. I'm in Times Square. <laughs> yeah, it was. They were saying like. I was like, what? Is it in kayfabe? They were like, no, a fan. I was like, wow, are you serious? Like, um, But there have been stories, like you guys said, of like Triple H like beating the crap out of people when they jump the barrier or, or it, whatever. Um, I think this guy should be prosecuted, though. And he will. I, I don't feel bad for him, but there was a fake mugshot going around. So if you see that, just be on the lookout. And that's not the actual mugshot. It was from like a drunk driver from Texas. Um, but that, I mean, I really, um, I, I just feel like this guy wanted attention and he got it. Um, and he also probably got some punches in the face. So hope he's happy. Um, big G. Well, congratulations. He got his 15 seconds of fame. Now his ass is going to jail for aggravate, aggravated assault, most likely. Um, yeah, that was just horrendous. Like Aaron said. I was watching it too, and like the screen just went black. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And uh, props to Drake Maverick too. Like you said on No DQ Live the one night, you know, he got everybody back in order, got things rolling again. Um, and Natalia got knocked down too, if I can remember correctly, yes. right? Yeah, she did. Yeah. And Davy Boy was in there, I think. And like you said, um, Shane and Travis Brown, a uh, right. couple other people. And I, I um, wanted to yeah, add. I, I saw another video uh, from a different angle, and you could actually see Devon Dudley almost catch the guy before he got in the ring. Devon was really quick; yeah. like he and, was like a what split was up second. With security that night was it? Were they like low security? Where did he come in from? Like an angle? I, it was it, just very. I, I I know I wasn't there that night, but it was just very open because they had the black barricades removed. Yeah. So I think you know he probably that guy probably sat there and just calculated his beeline it and it just happened yeah. i think it happened so fast security didn't even see it that's wilder i think he just sucker punched him because he couldn't get into the ring in time and do it there so he was apprehended and dash was like well it's not on camera or anything like that so he just sucker punched him and people yeah, tweeted it it. people yeah. tweeted about it and like because they recorded it but it wasn't like on tv you didn't see that happening i think that since the revival like personally admire the heart foundation and tag I think so too. this really pissed off them and dash just he just wanted to give them a good one to the face yeah absolutely well, it is what it is and you know hopefully it doesn't uh affect dash's career but you know like you said tjs maybe vince gave him a high five but he did take the tag belts off of him so which i think was going to so, happen regardless I think yeah, so. Well, you, you don't know. We don't work for WWE. It's it's no. fan speculation. But what nobody knew was going to happen, that Virtue said for months, I didn't say where, but I said these guys would get back in the business. Oh, oh Enzo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so Enzo and Morgan Big Cast in Ring of Honor. Now, why Ring of Honor? I don't know. Who knows? But they have them there for the heat. And Ring of Honor is a company of wrestling, where wrestling fans like to see their matches. They work with New Japan. They brought him in for the heat. I think this has a lot to do with Bubba Ray Dudley bringing him in. So, Big G, I want to start with you since you got the hat on. I think <laughs> that these guys were obviously going to be at G1 Supercard. I think maybe they would have did like a promo at the stage or something like that. And I think when the Brett news hit, 
and I, you know, this is just my speculation that they decided last minute, go out into the crowd and we're going to re we're going to have you jump the barricade. Like you weren't supposed to be here. Cause it was almost like when I was in New York city in times square, it was almost like, and again, with, with all due respect to what happened on nine 11, I'm sure people downtown said that building got hit by a plane. Oh, the other trade center, you know what I mean? And it was just kind of yeah. escalating news. It felt like that with this jumping the barricades at night, and I wasn't even at these events. I mean, literally, yeah. social media, Brett was attacked at the Hall of Fame of Barclays. Enzo and Cass jumped the rail at G1 Super Show. That I mean, it had that feel. Yeah. Um, thoughts? Because well, anybody that thinks that Enzo and Cass shouldn't be in the business, and you want to deny somebody a right to make money that's clearly talented, that clearly move the needles... Well, screw you. They're back in the business. Big G? Well, um, I was actually on YouTube earlier, and I looked at No DQ Review number four, and it was one year ago that I guess Enzo got fired from WWE, if I'm not, if I'm mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. And that video had almost 4,000 hits. Um, Enzo and Cass, they deserve to be wrestlers, and they do deserve to be in Ring of Honor. Because quite frankly, after Cody and the Young Bucks left and all them, who else do you have in uh, Ring of Honor besides Bully Ray and Jay Lethal? You don't have any big-time names. Enzo and Cass are big-time names. Now, Enzo did his little rap career thing, and okay, he didn't... That was just a side thing, I guess. And Big Cass, you know, you hadn't seen him after he got fired from WWE. So what do you do? You bring in the two hottest names that from WWE... Yep, Taking that were once time. number one for time period of time on the merch charts. Yep. Hey, I still got my certified G hat. I still got my Enzo and Big Cash shirt. So you know what? If you don't like Enzo and Cash, screw you guys. That's one. <laughs> they need the jobs. So that's all I have to say. TJS. Man, I really can't complain about this because I think as a duo is when Big Cass and Enzo are strongest. Uh, I think that them as a team is a really good combination. Uh, I haven't seen them as like a tag team heel, though, because when they were a team, they were babyface. But it seems like that's what they're doing now. And this was most definitely a work, because they even had like still certified T-shirts. And the way that they had walked out, uh, they, they weren't like tackled or handcuffed or whatever. I heard they were gently escorted out. Which, and that's not going to happen if it wasn't a work. We saw it happen with the guy that attacked Brett. Um, but, I mean, I'm happy for them. I think that uh, I really enjoyed Enzo as a heel, as a solo guy. And, uh, I mean, these two just complement each other so, so well because Enzo has the mic skills. Cass can go in the ring. And you have Enzo, like the little shrimp, and then Big Cass, the guy that's protecting him, watching his back. And I was really sad when they broke up in WWE because I thought that it was way too soon. So maybe these guys are going to make a name for themselves on the indies, become huge stars, bigger than they already are, and maybe Vince McMahon will take them back someday because Enzo was fired um, unethically for no reason. So. Well, I heard Enzo, he was at WrestleCon, and he had a pretty good line of people standing there paying him for autographs and merch. Just saying. Wrestling <laughs> fans may say they don't like Enzo, but there are a lot out there that obviously do, and there's proof of that. <laughs> right. He's charisma, man. Like, how can yeah. you not like him? Aaron yeah. Rift. Well, so I just wanted to say that when that happened, I was definitely curious as to what was going on, as I think a lot of people were. It definitely generated buzz, and let's face it here, um, it, it draws in people that are not fans of Ring of Honor or New Japan. It, it attracts yeah. the outsiders that might not follow it and they see that and they're like, Hmm, interesting. Maybe I'll check this out now. So I think it's definitely a positive and I think they do work really well as heels because they represent everything that ring of honor isn't ring of honor is all about the sports presentation and the athleticism. Enzo and big cast are the WWE guys. They're the sports entertainers. So they're, they're the complete opposite of what ring of honor fans want. So they are going to be like the outsiders, the heels, I love it. I think it's a great story, and I think they should keep playing up on that. You know, Enzo and Cash should go out there, call themselves sports entertainers, and just get those Ring of Honor fans worked up and angry and just play that role. I think it's going to be great. 
And do you remember the cruiserweight division was kind of like ROH with like the handshaking and everything. And then you had Enzo doing the poke to the eye, doing the low blow, and he was winning. So I, I just I thought it was awesome. It's it's really a clever way to be a heel in my opinion, and it's not cheap either. And you can't teach that. that. All right, let's go to um, a return and a debut here. Uh, we'll kind of tackle, uh, kill two birds with one stone. Sami Zayn is back. And oh my gosh, what a fantastic promo. I feel like a version of me is sitting next to Vince McMahon and the writers and uh, allowed this to happen. Awesome promo. The only thing it was missing was the word Mark. But anyway, because I, I mean, the thing is, he was there. Sami Zayn came back, lost the match, and then did what he did and basically did a work shoot on the fans. But the thing is, the fans, like when Elias would make fun of him, they cheered it. And it, to me, it's like, oh, God, please just boo the guy. If he would have <laughs> called him a mark, I think a lot of those fans take insult to that, would boo him. But nonetheless, I want everybody's thoughts on Zane. And Lars Sullivan finally got through his panic demons, and he attacked Kurt Angle and the Hardys. TJS, I'm going to start with you. Well, um, I guess I'll start with Sami Zayn. Um, I thought that it was really cool. I'm glad that he's a heel uh, because I feel like as a baby face, he's kind of played out. And I don't understand why WWE feels the need to show the returning guys walking backstage and they're like, Look who's coming back right after this commercial break. Like, why can't you just why can't you just give us that surprise? It's just like why do you advertise the demon Finn Balor for WrestleMania? Why can't he just show up? I like I just don't understand why they do that because it's not like someone's gonna text their friend and get like, Sami Zayn's about to come out. Uh, watch Raw. Like that's not if anything, they'll, the surprise will get to you, and then you'll text and be like, hey, Sami Zayn just came out. Hurry up. Get to Raw. Watch watch Raw. Uh, but, yeah, I love this promo. And it's really weird that him and Kevin Owens aren't together because it seems like Kevin is staying a babyface. Uh, from what I saw after SmackDown Live, they had the little confrontation. Owens hit him with the stunner. So I kind of like the reverse of roles, though. Uh, I like the idea of uh, Kevin as a baby face, Sammy as a heel, and I'm glad they're actually booing Sammy. Now I just need to change his theme song because they're going to sing that every time he comes out if they don't. And as far as Lars goes, whatever. I don't see anything special in him. Um, he's really ugly, and he's... Uh, he's and, definitely no EC3. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well... I, I don't know. Um, I just didn't see what it did for Baron Corbin to beat Kurt Angle and then have Lars Sullivan beat up Kurt Angle after Kurt Angle beat up Baron Corbin. I feel like Corbin should have just beaten up Angle, and I don't know why the hell Lars laid out the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. This doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I guess he's going to be like Strowman was, where he's just like, I'm going to beat up everyone. But I think that Strowman had more of the monster look than Sullivan does. Um, I don't know. I give it like three months before he loses his last name. He's just called Lars. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, Aaron, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, Big G, you go ahead. What do you think about everything? Um, I did enjoy Sammy's uh, promo. Kind of threw me off guard a little bit. Because um, they still cheer for him regardless. Um, as far as Lars Sullivan goes, see now we had he. They said he was debuting, right? Then he had this anxiety attack, supposed anxiety attack, and then you didn't hear from anything about him up until after WrestleMania. Don't you guys find that a little bit odd, or did, were they just trying to keep it hush hush until they were like until he was ready to come back? Well, I think they were just saving him. Okay, um, but yeah, I. I mean, down in NXT, he did the same thing. He was dominating everybody, and he's, I'm pretty sure he's going to do the same thing up on the main roster. And eventually, he'll fizzle out too. And um, like yeah. you said, DJS, he'll eventually, within a couple months, he'll just be known as Lars or Sullivan or he or no name. You know, he just comes out and he doesn't have a name. Yeah. <laughs> 
They're gonna call him Snitsky. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, Aaron, what did you think? Now, see, I think he has more potential than you guys are giving him credit for. When I first saw him in NXT at a live event a couple of years ago, he had this presence to him. He stands out to me. He looks like a guy that you do not want to run into in a back alley. He looks the part. You said he's ugly, TJS. Well, that's the point. You want to see this guy as a freak. You want to be scared of him. He has that professional wrestler look to him. And that will give him an opportunity in Vince's eyes. Will he be able to capitalize on it? Will he be able to stay mentally in the game? That remains to be seen. But I think if he does, I think he's very good as an athlete too. I think you guys are not giving him enough credit. I think if he can stay mentally in the game and he can continue to improve, um, I think he'll do really well. And I think that um, they should have him do some squash matches similar to what Strowman did when he first came in and Ryback. Let him just destroy yeah. indie guys for a couple of months and just slowly build him up. Don't just put him in there with the top guys right away. I, I did have that mixed feeling about the Hardy Boys. I don't think that that was necessary. Angle, yeah, I get it. Nobody cares about Corbin anyways, so whatever with that. Yeah. But uh, I thought oh, I thought that was kind of oh, interesting what he did to to Angle. But I don't understand. He got heat. Corbin got heat like ro like mini Roman heat. On Raw, I mean, yeah, they would have shut up if they didn't care about it. Seems like they're trying to get Baron Corbin to be like the top heel, and it's not working because you're going to feed him to Roman. That's Roman's next opponent, I think. Did you, man? Did you see all the pyro that Roman got at WrestleMania? That's off topic, but they still see him as the guy. There's no oh, question yeah. about. It. Well, duh. <laughs> I mean, Why would that change? I right, get back on track here. Yeah. Um, he he could be in the mid card, but uh, Aaron, did you give your thoughts on Sami Zayn? I I can't remember. Um, I'm hang over from Mania. I'm happy he's back. I love the promo. I thought it was great. I thought it was very well done. He's a, he's a, one of the best talkers in the company, in my opinion. Yeah. I've said this for a long time. I mean, uh, Virtue, I know you've had mixed feelings on Sami Zayn, but uh, I I think he's a great wrestler, great talker, just uh, overall one of the best performers in the company. And I'm happy he's back, and hopefully he can stay healthy. Well, it looks like a cab driver, but when he shoots. Shooting on the fans, and then he singles a couple out, and is like, huh, in the crowd. And I love that interaction. Disco Inferno said that should have been Roman Reigns' promo two years ago. It, you know, just they don't, they're not, they're not creative. They're just WWE doesn't do things at the right time. It's too little, too late. Guys, uh, uh, sorry, um, do you guys think that Sammy's gonna have success on his own, or do you think that his career is gonna be intertwined with Owens the whole time? Because I hope now that they separate the two. And that Sammy could go off on his own and not he, feel like he I mean, besides the whole Bobby Lashley thing, I mean, he did good before Kevin Owens. He was good. He's not. I mean, he's always gonna. He, he's always gonna be a mid Carter regardless. But he does good at, as a mid Carter, you know. Like Let's see Aaron what happens Dave. with this angle, though. Maybe that he they give him a lot of freedom on the mic, and maybe that he'll be like the new generation CM Punk, where the fans. Yeah. Or pulled to him because he's literally saying. But the thing, the difference is, Punk said that stuff about the the back, about the the management. Zayn is saying it against the fans, so it is a little bit different. So, and all right. Well, he said that. I immediately thought of virtue. I was like, "Yep, that's something virtue would have said." I thought of me too. Uh, anyway, Lacey Evans is all of a sudden after being a runway model, Jackie Kennedy, whatever of fashion of '60s fashion. For, for weeks and weeks, she's all of a sudden looking like she's Becky Lynch's next opponent. And she cold cocked her in the face a couple of times, on once on Raw, once on SmackDown. So is Lacey Evans pushed too fast? Um, Yes. But, and then where's Charlotte? Like, I know, I get they don't do rematches anymore. Charlotte wasn't involved. She lost her title on a screwy finish. And maybe we'll see what happens next week. Maybe we'll get, I have a feeling Paige is going to have this Ta great tag team of Charlotte and somebody else. Who knows what's going to happen with that? But I don't – storyline continuity. It's so bad, everybody. They have a job – is that real that they literally yes. have a job opening for storyline continuity? You know what that is, guys? It's just people watching all of their content, right? making notes, making sure whatever creative decides to do makes sense based on what's happened. I can't believe they don't already have people doing that. Aaron Rift? 
Oh, I agree one hundred percent. Storyline continuity. Go ahead. No, I mean it, it. It is ridiculous that they're actually looking for somebody to do that. You would think that they would have had somebody like that all along. And it's like it doesn't even matter anyways because at the end of the day, it's Vince's decision, and Vince is just going to change his mind whenever he feels like it. And I'm sure that's what's been happening already. So that's like trying to put a bandaid on the bigger problem, and that's that when it when it comes down to it, Vince is going to decide what he wants to do, whether it makes logical sense or not. And he'll change things the day of the show. We've seen it before. We've seen it over the past few weeks where they'll announce something for SmackDown. And then on SmackDown, something completely different happens. Um, they've changed yeah. their advertising several times. Um, as far as Lacey Evan goes, um, at least she's finally doing something. I don't, I don't know if she's going to be amounting to anything in the long term. But time will tell. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. I feel like it, it would be better if she slowly built herself up. But, you know, I guess Becky needs a fresh opponent, um, so she'll face L Lacey Evans at some point. Maybe they'll just have a match on Raw and Lacey will go back to the mid-card. Who knows? I, I I don't know. I think it's too early to tell how this is going to all play out with her. But, you know, I don't see Becky losing her titles anytime soon. And I guess that could be another topic. Do you guys think she's going to uh, be be merging the titles? Or how how will she lose one of those titles? How How is that going to play out? I think we should know by Monday, but I mean that's also something else we could debate on. Should it happen, or should she yeah. forfeit the title? Should they do a tournament? Uh, what do you guys think should happen with that? TJS, your thoughts on the whole Becky Lynch, Lacey Evans thing? Um, I think that Lacey Evans has a very excellent character. I think that the way that she dresses and the way that she walks and just her mannerisms are excellent, and you really do buy that character. You really do think that she's the sassy Southern Belle, even though I really hate that. And I, I don't see the problem with just calling her the lady. Um, but whatever. I did see like a joke that someone posted online that said, of course, right wing Lacey Evans has a problem with <laughs> Becky Lynch, who identifies herself as a man. I thought that was really funny. Um, regardless, um, I think that Lacey Evans is a good wrestler. She did some good stuff in NXT. Her finisher, her finisher even has a cool name. It's called the Women's Right, um, and you get it's a play on words. And I just feel like that character is very good. It's very marketable. I think probably the strongest character character in the women's division besides Amber Moon. Um, I think that they, these. I just wasn't a fan of doing the same segment on Raw and SmackDown. It, it was pretty much a duplicate. You had Lacey yeah. Evans come. There and then Becky didn't see the sucker punch coming. Two day, two nights in a row. Come on, stupid baby face. <laughs> right? Um, really dumb. But I don't see Lacey winning any of the titles, like you said. And I feel like they're going down the route of merging all of the championships. It seems because you saw Aaron posted about how Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins proposed a winner take all match against the Hardys. So. Could you imagine if the Revival kept their titles and we got Revival versus Hardys? Wouldn't that have been a better match? I think so. But, yeah, it seems like titles are merging. And then I wonder if we're going to get Kofi versus Seth Rollins in a unification match at, like, the Saudi Arabia show or something. So I, I just wanted to add, even if it was the Revival and the Hardys, the Hardys would win, and then people would still complain about the Revival getting buried. <laughs> Unless the revival win every single match they're in, they're getting buried and they're not hey, getting their their just. Hey, due. that storyline continuity at least the revival getting buried. Right. They don't even get entrances, and you know what? When they were tag champions, they get like half of an entrance, and then they would cut away to like the Spanish announce table. Just piss me off, um, Big G. What do you think about this whole situation with Becky? And um, um, I think Lacey Evans is a first good opponent. Yeah, they should have built her up these past couple months that she's been on Raw and SmackDown instead of walking down the aisle away and showing off her her legs and whatnot and her fashion sense. And um, I mean, she's had what dark matches before the shows, but that really doesn't count. Um, yeah, there's no uh, rematches in WWE, unfortunately. So I don't know how Charlotte's going to fit all into this again and how Ron is going to fit into all this again. Unless 
somehow miraculously they say, oh, well, you know what? You're Ronda Rousey, you're Charlotte Flair, so you get a rematch, you get a rematch. Um, well, wait a minute. Whoa, so, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, Buddy Murphy <laughs> got a rematch. But see, that's, see, that's the thing. In when did that happen? On two hundred five live, yeah. yeah. Well, if a tree, sorry, Noah. If a tree falls in the forest, no one's around to hear it. Doesn't make a sound. <laughs> oh, so, snap. Me, I'll, so apparently, in two hundred five live and NXT and NXT UK, you can still get rematches, but on Raw and SmackDown, you can't. So it's like, okay, rematches. To tell you the truth, man. You do it, it does make weird it's it's weird logic though because wouldn't you think Daniel Bryan would have been on SmackDown to be like, you know, whoa, you're yeah. fluke. And they're gonna just and who knows what they'll do, you know. But I it, it seems like they kept some people off TV this week, like Brian and Charlotte, because they're obviously moving in different directions and Absolutely. they'll be affected by this superstar shakeup, which we will yeah. talk about in our main event. Yeah. Um other than that, you know, with the whole storyline thing, it is what it is. Okay. Well, you now, brought it up. The heart. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Um, <clears throat> yep. Revival got their rematch against uh, Ryder and Hawkins. They did. They did. Who, so, where did it become official that rematches don't happen? Did WWE say that? Yeah. yeah. Well, Vince, what did Vince McMahon Vince also Vince say? Vince You're the authority. Yeah, 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 yeah. This... You can't believe when, anything when they, they say. they promised us, remember when they said, I think it was a couple months ago when they promised you know, things were going to change, new superstar, new matches, uh, automatic rematch clauses are no longer effective, and we are the authority. Yeah, that's when they all said that. And uh, <laughs> Never believe okay. the McMahons, come on. Do that clip of Vince saying, I don't give a damn what you people want. Pretty much. Um, you know, this was a topic. We, we kind of already talked about the Hardys winning the tag, tag titles over the Usos. You know, it's weird because I thought like a year ago or whatever, Matt had that bad hip issue and his back issue, and he was like going to retire. And like I'm sitting there on SmackDown, and they won the titles, and I'm like, it's 2019, and the Hardys are still relevant, and they won the tag titles. So does anybody have thoughts on that? Like, could the Hardys be – this is my point I want to make. We get sick of nostalgia acts, right, because people get too old. I think the one nostalgia act that nails it every time – is the Hardys, even if it feels like it's overdone. The Hardys are that good. It's a nostalgia act that hits over and over again. So what's everyone's quick thoughts on the Hardys winning the SmackDown tag titles? Big G, I'll start with you. Well, I was happy for one. I've been a Hardys, Hardys fan since I started watching wrestling. Um, like you said, they, they're they like the Undertaker. They keep, you know, they keep going with, with the changes. I mean... Now they're reverting back to like their late nineties with the whole t shirt the shirts and everything and Matt with the long hair again and little goatee. Uh Jeff didn't have any face paint on last night either. Um Heck bring he's back Lita, let her manage them. Oh, there you no, go. Why not? And Jeff was wearing his little fishnet shirt again and just it reminded me of my childhood and you know, back in the Indies they had the whole delete thing. And that really didn't work. I mean, it worked with Matt a little bit with Bray. It, then, it worked enough to get them hired back to WWE exactly. because it created a buzz. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, I'm glad that they're there, the tag champs. Maybe we'll see. I mean, who are you going to have on SmackDown? I mean, Hardys versus the New Day, you know, and if the Usos get a rematch, you know, Hardys versus the Bar. But we've seen that before, too, on SmackDown or on Raw. So, and apparently, um, what was I looking at? Matt Hardy had posted something like he won the Raw Tag Team titles back in April when they came back, and now it's April again two years later, and they won the SmackDown Tag Team titles. So, and I'm glad Matt's in good shape. I think that's the best shape he's been in a while. Oh, yeah. You know, since everything, I think ever since what the V1 character, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, maybe. Back in 2003. Yeah, so. you got to remember, too, a lot of these guys, they, you know, especially the Hardys, they got money, right? They're millionaires. Oh, yeah. But they, the love of doing it, you know, it's hard to let it go. So, Absolutely. TJS, what's your thoughts on the Hardys here? Uh, yeah, you said they have money. Look at the Hardy compound, dude. That's that's crazy. Um, yeah. I, I think that the Hardys are a good act. 
because they even have the music that gets you pumped up. They have a cool theme song. They have unique looks. And I still think that if I was Jeff Hardy, I wouldn't wrestle in, like, the long sleeve black shirt and the jeans. I bet he has to be burning up in that. Um, but I think that uh, them wanting the SmackDown tag title. You know, it's crazy because you look at the Raw tag division and then look at the SmackDown tag division. You have arguably one of the best teams in the world holding the SmackDown titles and then a bunch of jobbers holding the Raw ones. Ooh. Crazy. Um, but I think that the Usos, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the shakeup. But it's a shame that they didn't do that match at Mania yeah. Yeah. for the titles. You know, it really is. A ladder match or something would have been would have been just awesome. And I feel like that match that they did on SmackDown should have gotten more time because those are two of the best teams in the world. Uh, I do hope that – I really like the Matt Hardy delete thing, and I would like to see Brother Nero and Hulk and Matt together. Uh, like I the, think that's more impactful in the indies. I really yeah. do. After, yeah. Just because WWE just can't they, – they don't see it the way this, the lower budget – it works in a lower budget. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So look how they have the, under the House of Horrors. Look how that turned out. <laughs> Um, I am happy that Matt is doing his thing and um, hopefully he keeps doing it for a while Um, Aaron um, yeah well the Hardys the Hardys age like fine wine not that I would know anything about that I am really happy for them I'm glad that they're the tag team champions again I agree that it should have been at Wrestlemania my only complaint is that the titles are being hot potatoed too much I think it went from the bar to Miz and Shane and then Miz and Shane to the Usos, and then the Usos to the Hardys. And, you know, I, I think they should merge the titles, like I've said many times. Um, I'd like to just see the Hardys beat Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder on Monday and merge the titles. I'd like to see the Usos go to Raw. The Raw tag division needs a serious, uh, serious boost because they don't have much going on there right now. Maybe send the Revival to SmackDown, have them feud with the Hardys for the titles. That might be able to get the Revival. Although, again, I don't know if they're going to win because I, I don't see the titles being hot potatoed. Hopefully not. I think I think the Hardys should keep the titles for a while now and you know beat some teams. But, yeah, both divisions, well, especially Raw's division, needs a shot in the arm and needs some more star power so hopefully the shakeup balances things a bit and and maybe we get a couple new teams introduced from nxt and just get things get things on the right track again so we'll see yeah good point and you know before we hit our main event i don't because last week we did the uh wrestlemania preview and predictions so we we didn't talk on the review about jim ross and aew did we i want to talk about that i want to get everybody's thoughts um, it's official. He's signed there, and he's probably got a big deal backstage. Who knows, you know, uh, a, a senior advisor, whatever, probably will do some commentating. Um, obviously, he knows a lot about the business. He was a very, very, very good head of talent relations for WWE. He really, you know, pulled the right strings to get the right talent in place for probably one of their best eras heading into the 2000s. I believe JR was responsible for the class of 2002 from OVW, bringing them up, um, Orton, Batista, Cena, and Brock Lesnar. So I, I think that'll he'll help AEW with that. Um, Commentating-wise, I don't see him being good old JR in the booth working with today's fan base because they really picked him apart calling – um, he's older now and he can't get, you know, it's too fast. It's, it's way, he told the stories good and yeah. emphasize like Kane fire through hellfire and brimstone stone cold. So, but the matches are too fast paced and the names are like the Japanese names are harder. I'd like to see heel JR in the commentary booth. I don't know. Like what's your thoughts about JR and AEW? We can do this real quick. Aaron Rift. Well, I think it's definitely a good decision to bring him in. And have him working for the company. That's definitely a positive. The announcing, eh, yeah, I, I think you make some great points, Virtue. I think that he's just maybe a bit too old for the job now. And when he was doing the New Japan commentary, he was botching some of the names and he just seemed like he was a step off. But even JR at half speed is probably better than what you got in WWE right now. So 
I, I don't know who else you would have in that spot. Unfortunately, they cannot get more Ronaldo because he's working for WWE. If they could get Ronaldo, Ronaldo would have been a great asset for AEW, but he's with WWE's NXT brand. Um, I am a big fan of them bringing in Justin Roberts. I think he's a great ring announcer. I think he does a fantastic job. So good for AEW on that. And I don't know if you guys heard, um, it, it, the news kind of broke before we did this, but uh, there's this big rumor now that um, AEW has a TV deal with Turner and they're going to be possibly on TNT or TBS. Uh, that's been here one of go. the big rumors. Uh, history repeats itself, Aaron, but let's not get too excited. Let's see what how it all unfolds. Yeah, but uh, it, it's going to be a very interesting fall season because you got SmackDown moving the Fox and possibly AEW um, on national television. Uh, gonna gonna be a very interesting remainder of 2019 for sure. But um, yeah, Big G, any other thoughts you have on Jim Ross? You think it's a good thing he's there, or do you think um, well, maybe they I'm need gonna, some youth? I, I'm gonna get all the thumbs down because, like I told Virtue, at this point. I really don't care about AEW. It's it's it's, it's a threat to your NXT. I mind, get right I understand that. It's threatening your NXT's popularity. It's it, I I don't need another wrestling show to watch. You have so much wrestling content out there. How you're going to burn the Okay, yeah, you're hey. going to have stuff hey. for different people. Quit. But you already have Ring of Honor. You already have New Japan. Well, you Why? could you could quit NXT and 205 Live. No. Well, I don't watch 205 Live, but I would never in a million freaking years would I ever, ever quit NXT or NXT UK. Mm -hmm. I, that's, that's my... And guess indie, what? Guess what? Bret Hart indie. said he was never going to leave the WWE in 1996. Now, if... If AEW becomes as popular as everybody wants it to be, then maybe I'll give it a oh, shot. Oh, so you're just going right to jump now, on the bandwagon then. If it gets what? too popular, then you're going to start watching it. You're not going to watch it because it's a good product. You're going to watch it because... And that's why he likes NXT, because it's kind of got the indie buzz. And, and I, I'm hey. good to go. I don't need any other wrestling company. So, so you're over. That's now. all I have to say. Right. Okay. TJS. Wait, hold, 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 time out real quick before you go, TGS. What about if Shayna Baszler left and went to All Elite Wrestling? <laughs> I don't think she would ever do that. Not in a million years. All right. Well, would... everybody save that. Uh, get a get a video uh, recording of what he just said there for posterity. What did Scott Hall say once in WCW? You know who I am, but you don't know why I'm here. What if Shayna Baszler showed up in AEW and cut that same promo? Nobody knows who I am, and you don't know why I'm here. <laughs> Might be true, but sorry, Big G. I think she would rather go back to MMA than go to a pissant company like the AEW, like Triple H said. That's a very Vince markish that thing to say right there. Just like that. That's a very markish thing to say. Um, TJS. Say what you will, AEW is bringing in the heavy hitters, man. They got Jericho, Justin Roberts, Jim Ross, Neville, who is Pac, but I still hate that name. Um, is he having visa issues right now? Uh, I, I don't know. He said he might not even be at the double or nothing. I don't know. Um, I hope that he is, though. Um, also, I think Greg Hamilton is still better than Justin Roberts. I'm sorry, but... Nah. Justin Roberts is the one that did John Cena, right? All those years? Yeah. Yeah. But Greg Hamilton's the guy that does the face that runs the place. Hey, Jay Styles. And he does the whole best in the world thing for Shane. I just think that he's really good. And he's also liked a couple of my tweets. Well, that Our explains it. That <laughs> explains this uh, ass kissing here. I you guys are outing yourself that you can't do that. I really do think that he's really good. And um, also, Jim Ross, um, I mean, the AEW has Jim Ross, WWE has Marl Ranallo, so I don't know. I think that Ranallo is still the better guy for a play-by-play. So play. You, have, you have By God versus Mamma Mia. Did Ranallo like your tweets too? Uh, he actually replied to me once and said, hashtag blue brand for life when I told him that SmackDown was good. Well, he blocked me because I said I didn't like his overemphasis. But, you know, we all have our different opinions and tastes. Well, 
Have, have you seen those videos that they post of Morrow, like at the takeovers? They like they show the video of his body language and everything. He just yeah. gets. JR, JR used to be known for when I was at Raw and I would see him and Lawler down at the booth being at Raw Live. JR, during Austin or Kane or what, he'd oh, yeah. rock back and forth. But it was different. JR was a play by play guy, but that got passionate about the story work, like Stone Cold. You know, Morrow's more about the actual action. So they're actually different. It's hard to compare those. Yeah. Two. Yeah, and I think that Mara wouldn't have worked in wrestling like maybe 20 years ago because they didn't do all the moves that they do today. Yeah. They had Mara, and he's calling like every single move correctly. Besides the what are you talking about Justin Roberts and Greg? what about Tony Chimmel? Uh, he's the just, rated R superstar. I kind of, I don't. Nobody's think. better than Fink. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think that WWE is too self-aware for their own good. Like, they started doing, having Tim with the edge thing every single time to where it's like, okay, it was funny, but you're doing it too much. That's just what they do. All right. Is everyone ready for the main event? Because we're going to talk about just quick predicts for the Superstar Shakeup, which takes place Monday and Tuesday, I believe. Yeah. And here we are. I always found it weird that they do it a week after the – you know, Raw and SmackDown after Mania. Now, they did some teases, which I felt was weird. We saw um, Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre on SmackDown, whatever. Anybody have any, like, what you would like to see? You know, who you would like to see jump ship on either show? Or maybe something you act, you know, think will happen for sure. Um, me, personally, I would, for so I don't know what it is why I keep thinking I want to see AJ Styles on Monday Night Raw. I know he was SmackDown, the face that runs the place, whatever. To me, that's one thing I would like to see. I don't know against who. May, maybe if Roman stayed on Raw, maybe I like want to see them feud. I don't know. I mean, I know they've wrestled before, but yeah. Big G, what what's the big shakeups? And um, you want to also talk about the puppet bird out of the box and what where that might lead to? Oh, uh, Bray Wyatt. Um. <laughs> I don't know where Bray Wyatt's going to land, you know. Maybe he was on SmackDown for the longest time, wasn't he? So I maybe he'll go back to Raw. Uh, I could see AJ Styles going back to Raw and feuding with Seth Rollins over the Universal title. Um, I don't know who else. It's, it's, it's really hard to say. Maybe they'll put Strowman on SmackDown and give him some fresh matchups. Um, like Aaron Will said, this I'm still involve people. any NXT people, or do you think they've pretty much already brought yeah, up gonna, who they wanted to? I read the NXT spoilers. Apparently, it was Kyrie Sane's last night because Paige is going to bring up Io Shirai and Kyrie Sane oh. as the Sky Pirates. Um, I see Pete Dunn coming to the mate roster because he finally lost the NXT UK title. Um, I see him going like, to 205 Live. No, nah, I see him going to Raw. Um, Usos, like Aaron said, I could see them going to Raw because tag Raw tag team division needs a boost, <laughs> big time. Other than that, you know, we'll see what happens next week on Raw and SmackDown. We could have our predictions could be right, could be wrong, but that's the that's the thing about the shakeups. You don't know who's gonna go where. TJS, well, or, go ahead, Richie, what are you gonna say? Well, I was gonna send it to Aaron because I was gonna ask. Do you think that this shakeups temporary because why do I have the feeling they're going to get rid of brand identity? And as SmackDown goes to Fox in the fall, it's going to be one big brand again. You know what I mean? Like, to me, that's why right. this shakeup doesn't necessarily mean anything. Well, I, I feel the same way. Like, the last couple of weeks especially, it feels like the brand split's already starting to fizzle out. But I don't know. TJS, did you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. All right. I think that, first of all, Alistair Black and Ricochet are going to end up on separate brands because they yeah. won, like, three different tag title matches. Um, I think that Roman Reigns is going to go to SmackDown. I think Daniel Bryan is probably going to go to Raw. Um, Revival, SmackDown. And I, I could see Finn Balor and Samoa Joe trading places, have Finn go over to SmackDown, Joe to Raw, and bring the U.S. title with him. Um and I guess if Roman goes to SmackDown and takes the WWE title from Kofi, I am all for that. That would be great. Um, I, I think that um, Sky Pirates are coming up, like Big G said. 
Paige is going to be the mouthpiece. I think Undisputed Era will probably come up. Uh, maybe Pete Dunne. Um, well, we know Dean Ambrose is. You think that, you think Dean Ambrose is going to show up on SmackDown or something? Since I mean, they did the big farewell speech after Raw, and honestly, I teared up a little bit at that, guys. I thought that was really sad. He's done. Yeah, I just hate to say that, man. It's it's sad, um, but um, I think that's about all uh, we'll see change. I doubt that we'll get any of the teases that they showed because they're just like screwing with us. Like, oh, this could happen. I think if, if Strowman goes to SmackDown, he would clean out that whole brand. There's nobody <laughs> believable on SmackDown for him to face. I don't Joe, think. that's who he right. tagged. I mean, yeah. if Joe stayed. Now, yeah. see, I, I agree with you, TJS, about, like, I feel like Finn Balor's going to go to SmackDown and Joe's going to go to Raw. Strowman will stay on Raw, and Joe and, and uh, Strowman will actually have a feud. I, I think that's going to happen. I think that was purposely done. Uh, because who else can you have Strowman really face that's like even close to his equal? Like, I don't think Joe and Strowman have had like a really lengthy feud. What about I think Lars? It's too soon. I think it's too soon for Lars and Strowman. But I think Lars will be on the same brand as Strowman, so you can eventually build up Lars for Strowman. So I sense they'll be on the same brand. Probably Raw. And yeah, I think there's a decent chance that Reigns goes to SmackDown with uh, the Fox deal coming up. You know, there's going to be a. a larger emphasis on SmackDown with it being on Fox. So that's something I've been predicting for months that Reigns would go to SmackDown. Maybe not though. Maybe he doesn't, but um, I feel, I feel like there's a decent chance. And uh, I feel like AJ is going to stay on SmackDown if Balor goes to SmackDown, because I sense like there's going to be something, maybe AJ and Balor have a feud. I don't think they've actually feuded in WWE. Have they, to my knowledge? They just had that match. Just that one off match at CLC. Right, so they haven't had like a proper feud, uh, and Balor, I, I think it's time for him to go over to SmackDown. Um, yeah. See, so yeah, I, I feel I'm gonna actually call. I'm gonna call it the other way. Strowman goes to SmackDown. AJ goes to Raw. I got that feeling. Kind of like a little predictions game here. All right. Well, fair enough. But um, yeah, and like I said, Usos to Raw, I could see happening. Um, as far as call ups go, Pete Dunne and uh, like you said, Big G, maybe uh, the Pirate Princesses will go to SmackDown with Paige. And other than that, I don't think we'll see much as far as NXT call-ups go because yeah. we've already had a bunch already this year. I bet Cedric Alexander shows up on like SmackDown or something because he's he's done everything you can do at 205. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Who? Ah, ha, ha. <sighs> well, all right, let's call it a wrap. I mean, that's just, you know, that's a tease. I'm sure next week we will actually talk about what ended up happening. So For sure. Let's let's go around and do our plugs. This has been a long review, and uh, I have to actually go back to work tomorrow. So, Big G. NoDQ.com slash Big G takes you to my Twitter page. NoDQ underscore Big G on Instagram. Jeff Fields on Facebook. Uh, NoDQ.com slash shirts. Everybody's got shirts. I think the sale just ended yet yeah, our Monday, so shirts are back to regular price. I'm not wearing a NoDQ shirt tonight, unfortunately. Um, and that's it for the big G, TJS. Take it away, buddy. NoDQ.com slash TJS. Take it to my Facebook page. Feel free to there. Talk about wrestling like I always say. Twitter, at NoDQ underscore TJS. And also, PlayStation Network, you can add me there. It's just Tyler Joseph Smith. Uh, they finally implemented the name change feature. So feel free to add me. I play WWE 2K19, Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, all your favorites. I play them all. You can you can, uh, you can, can play with me. Um, Did you create a character on that and you fight EC3 all the time? <laughs> I team up with me. Okay. He teams up with me. We're the champs. Um... That's his fantasy. <laughs> you guys have the you guys have the Billy and Chuck entrance. <laughs> All right. So uh, in case you guys did not hear that, because Virtue is messing with the papers to sabotage TJS's plug, go to nodq.com slash TJS. And uh, this this Friday I will be doing no DQ and A live. So Tune in for that. It'll be 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Also on Monday and Tuesday, I'm doing live reactions throughout the entire three hours of Raw. So it's going to be a three-hour live stream. I'll be taking Skype calls. Maybe you guys could call in at some point with your thoughts. And then Tuesday night, I'll be doing the same thing for two hours. 
doing a live stream during the shows, which is the first time I'm ever doing this. Don't know what's, how it's going to turn out, but maybe you guys can help me out with that. So that's all I got. Virtue, let's go ahead and close this up. Follow me on Twitter at NoDQ underscore Virtue and go to Facebook, NoDQ.com slash Virtue, lowercase v. For Big G, for TGS, for Aaron Rift, I am Virtue. See you next time.